what's going on guys and welcome to our first ever budget week that means monday through friday we're going to drop five different decks and all of them have one goal in mind a hundred dollar budget and that's what we build first and foremost we are doing mufasa roulette so an amber ruby build we got two replays that we're going to go over and then we have the deck list that we will cover if you're interested in becoming a patreon your contributions directly help the giveaways on the channel, such as the four Robin Hood champion of Sherwood one that you can see right there. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. So our first replay is against Steel Song, and we actually get to go first. The key to going first, play a budget deck apparently. So going first, we really don't have anything that we want. However, I'm like, we got Little Queen for our comeback play. Doc is always nice to get to later. Big Queen of Hearts if we have to challenge his board to be able to draw as well. Because obviously being on a budget we cannot play things like Rapunzel. Which means Mother Gothel also not going to be in the deck. Because we don't have a way to truly heal her um, effectively. Uh, we get Pongo, Mufasa, Prince Eric in the process. So we ink and we don't have a one drop so... We pass turn. Our opponent inks a big surfer stitch and deciding what he's going to do, waiting. No Cinderella comes out, so now we hit a one drop. So we're going to get rid of the Pongo, just another card to help tutor out into your deck to get to cards that you want uh, with his pay to cost check. And it's almost always going to be a character, so you get to add it to your hand. Um, no point in going with the queen here. I figure get Pluto down to help us get into other characters faster because queen and her rush is actually really nice to have and it kind of keeps some information hidden from your opponent. So I didn't want to throw her down. It'd be better hold her in your hand and they don't know that you have the rush. Uh, we draw an uninkable card. So at this point we're going to get rid of that queen. I'm like, we could go for Doc, or we exert the Pluto and put Prince Eric on board. Um, he is just so good in this deck, obviously being able to deal with your opponent's boards, and he's a cheap option. Another card that you may normally see in these decks is, other than that Rapunzel, would be something like a Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. Again, not going to be in our list. Robin Hood Champion of Sherwood gets inked, and the Ariel comes down. He swings and misses on it. We have some interesting replays on that. And then he sings Bare Necessities with his Cinderella. So he gets to see our hand, sees that we have absolutely nothing for him. Draw a Pongo, we can get rid of that, and we can ink him. So we can go ahead there, exert our um, Pluto to play our dock. Queen comes down with Rush. We get rid of the Cinderella, and then we can quest with our Prince Eric. We also have Madame Medusa in hand who can deal with his champion of Sherwood if we need to. So I'm pretty happy with where we're at. We got the better board state. We're kind of in control. Something like grab your swords right there hurts a lot. But now Prince Eric can come back and get rid of the aerial still. So if he inks a card, he's got three in hand. Uh, ink a card, play a card. We're essentially on par with each other as far as advantage and everything else. So... Uh, we're in a in a decent spot still. Let the Storm Rage on comes down, gets rid of our dock, and replaces itself. So he actually gets to go plus pretty good there. Ink of Bare Necessities. He's still got that one extra card up on us. The biggest thing about that too is we lost all of our kind of ramp tools um, to get out our higher cost characters easier with the Pluto and the dock both going away in one turn. Uh, we draw a Surfer Mini, and I thought about putting her down but we have a lot of higher cost cards, and I just really need to get to at least that 5 mark. If you can get to 5 or 6, usually you're sitting pretty good. Mr. Smee gets inked. We have our Mufasa down, and then the whole new world gets hard casted. Um, I'm okay with that because, well, we weren't in a very good spot, to say the least. Uh, just checking, again, our discard piles. Here, too, we got a couple stitches, which is going to be really nice. Um, we got the Pluto for Bodyguard. Don't really need the Nani in there. She's just a good 3-6 Bodyguard who quests for 2. And she was cheap. We're playing a budget deck, remember? 
Uh, we put down Stitch. His 4-6 is actually really nice. Any quests for 3. We also have another Stitch, so we can put down a second copy next turn and then come back with, say, something like Pluto as a big bodyguard. Our opponent goes Stitch, Stitch, still 3 more Ink, Cinderella. It's kind of odd. I was like, okay, so if he has big Stitch, but at the same time, like, Usually you would want to go into your big stitch, your rock star, and then start dropping all the low cost characters so that you can start getting draws off of them. But I was like, we got to watch out for Cinderella because big Cinderella would suck to run into. But at the same time, we're at nine with seven more on board. One big Cinderella can't take out Pluto in one turn either. So again, I felt like I was in a pretty commanding spot at this point. If he, say, shifted Big Cinderella, Big Cinderella and Smee would take out the Pluto, which means we still get 5, so we'd go to 14 minimum. Um, and we can come back with, like, another Pluto, which means we're going to 19. So, like, any way I look at this, I was just trying to think, I'm like, I don't think we really lose. We're in a good spot no matter what at this point. So, uh, pretty happy with it. Rockstar comes down, and that all but confirms that we are going to win this game. Um, yeah, there's not, not a whole lot that says I wouldn't at this point. Waiting while our opponent goes through his options. Uh, strength of the Raging Fire. So I was like, when he first played it, I'm like, it's pointless to hit the Pluto. Only one damage will stick. If you hit the Mufasa, it floats. So you hit the Stitch... And I was like, but it doesn't take it out. So I felt pretty good with that. And then again, whole new world comes down. So I just get another full hand. Unfortunately, this hand is much worse than the other hand. Uh, but at the same time, we're in such a good spot that it's probably not going to matter. We can go to, we can quest to 16. We have seven ink to spend here too, trying to play the game. And uh, Pixelborn was glitching out on us a little bit, just seeing if a different card works. Neither Pongo wants to work. Um, then I'm like, well, we'll just pass turn and just essentially lose a turn. However, it just never worked for us. Um, we didn't get a turn at all. So then we get our draw finally. Madame Medusa also outs that Stitch Rockstar, which is just crazy value for us. Ink the Nani. Throw down another bodyguard. So we got two bodyguards and way more than enough lore on board and we're up 16-0 so it's basically a wrap and as soon as our opponent decides to admit defeat we can get on into our next replay as soon as he does it obviously with this deck being Mufasa roulette our hundred dollar budget got burnt up pretty quickly by those four Mufasas it just wouldn't be Mufasa Roulette without Mufasa and like I said unfortunately that was almost half of our budget just on that play set so the other 56 cards accounts for the other half so we're going second against Ruby Amethyst this time Pluto, Stitches, Fishhook, Bear Necessities, Pongo and Mickey um, I'm like we'll keep our one drop and keep Bear Necessities whether it just ends up being ink or not. I don't know yet. I was just like, you can ink it, but they have friends. They have castles. So it's got options. And I'd be able to see his hand. So I was just like, we'll see what I would decide to do. Going second, uh, we end up getting a Surfer Mini, Simba, Mufasa, Chernabog, and Stitch. Crab gets inked. Rafiki comes down. We draw into a dock. I'm like, yep, yeah, Bare Necessities can go at this point. We'll put our Pluto down. Uh, we can put Simba down, who would trade with that Rafiki. I'm um, like, I can deal with that, uh, deal with the challenger. Uh, we draw into a Queen of Hearts at that point. So we ink our Queen of Hearts. Uh, player Simba as a bodyguard exerted. Quest for one with the Pluto, knowing that Rafiki's going to just trade off with the Simba here. So he inks a friends on the other side play the surfer so surfer mini comes down um four in hand we draw another bodyguard but i'm really like i don't care about protecting pluto that much at this point so then we go with our own surfer mini we're up to we're in a decent spot 
Maui gets inked, Rabbit comes down, he's going to get that extra draw. Um, what else we can do here next turn? We could ink one and get out our Mufasa. Um, our, we get our Mickey Taylor. Uh, he's a card that you never really want in your hand. He's more or less, you hit him off Mufasa. Um, but we, we don't really get up to that 8, 8 ink too often. So he's just really good ink fodder if you do draw him. So we go for the dock because now we got our two rampers on board with the Pluto and the dock. Maui comes down. And I was confused there why you attack with the rabbit. You quest with the rabbit and you attack with the Maui. Essentially, it does the same thing, but you get one lore in the process. So we draw another queen. We're going to go ahead and ink her one more time. We quest with Doc to go to 7, play her stitch, quest with Mini to go to 9. It's like if Maui trades off with the Doc, we can go to 12, 14, and then Maui gets finished off when he takes out the stitch. Uh, Yzma comes down, I was like, okay, I lose my, one of my cards. He went for his rabbit and got to draw three in the process. I was actually pretty okay with that, though. Um, so we come down with Mufasa here. Quest, quest, like I said, we go to 14. We're threatening game now, too. But Maui can trade with the stitch, so we won't get game. Um, I'm like, be prepared also is a huge threat at this point, so kind of expecting that to come down especially with how many draws he got and that's why he went with Yzma because he didn't have the be prepared yet and hit his rabbit so in fact the be prepared does come down we get to float the Mufasa we get a multi quester in Prince Eric which is really nice uh, so we are gonna go to 16 lore at a minimum so we quest with Prince Eric go to 16 play our Chernabog so now we're threatening lethal one more time uh, if he has Be Prepared or something of those lines, um, Lady Tremaine, Madame Medusa, uh, Maui would keep him in the game. But if he can't get rid of the Chernabog, the Medusa does come down, hits the Prince Eric, which also gets to go, come back and remove that Madame Medusa, which is really nice. Um, but if he can't remove the Chernabog, I go to 19, and then I just need one more at that point, which is pretty easy to get to. Uh, in a super simple state like that um, against Ruby Amethyst. You can't just throw one character each turn, though, because they have too many good trade-offs, like the Lady Tremaines, the Madame Medusas, uh, Dragonfire, things like that. I often try to put two characters down at a minimum. Like, I'll pass a whole turn if I need to get that extra card in my hand, and then put down multiple characters if you only need that one more to try to get around those types of things uh, because even to be prepared like they're gonna just peck off your one card um, pretty frequently if that's the route you try to go for it so after a whole bunch of thinking he ends up scooping and we win that game so let's go ahead and jump into the deck list and then well oh what is going on here there we go fixed it fixed it our deck list so i know it's at hundred dollar budget apparently some of the cards shifted in the time of doing the replays earlier today and um well right now so technically this one comes in over budget at 103 dollars and 30 cents so you're gonna have to find that 330 in your change bin or something like that to cover the difference uh we got 14 uninkable cards. We're heavy in our three and five costs. We only have four ones and ten twos. So Pluto being our only one cost. And we're a very character heavy deck. And Pluto being able to exert to pay one less for the next character you play obviously just makes a lot of sense. Simba comes in as a bodyguard, which protecting your Pluto. Uh, can be very important to get into your higher cost characters faster between Pluto and your Doc. Doc being obviously over here, another four of quest for two, and like Pluto, he can help you get to those bigger characters sooner. Queen of Hearts being Rush, a 2 2 Rush character is really, really nice uh, to just come down on that comeback play to take out your opponent's threats. We ended up playing four Pongo because you can pay two ink. Reveal the top card if it's a character. We're playing 56 of them, 
add it to your hand. So we're a little light on, say, the card draw, but he's just a card where he can get you into your other characters a little nicer. Uh, Minnie Mouse is another cheap high quester, so we're playing four of her. Being evasive just helps as well. Prince Eric, this card can help deal with your opponent's threats very, very nicely. He's a two of. Um, quest for two, there's not a whole lot else to say about him. Like I said, half of the deck cost is the four Mufasas, but we're playing Mufasa Roulette, so it felt like one card you just cannot cut. Her 3-6 stat line, questing for two, was why we put her in. Being a bodyguard, also very nice. Of the five cost bodyguards, she felt like the best one to put here. Queen of Hearts was there as air, kind of your draw engine. If you're challenging your opponent, you're getting the draws. You're getting the draws, you're getting the cards you need, you get the cards you need, you win the game. Lady Tremaine and Madame Medusa. So this was another little chunk of our budget here, coming like four fifty five, six seven dollars for these four cards. Lady Tremaine being very nice for questing as two as well. But Madame Medusa deals with Tragic Hero. She deals with Rockstar. She deals with the champion of Sherwood. She deals with so many threats. Four stitch because he quests for three and his four six stat line is actually kind of nice. Pluto, another card that just quests for multiple and is a very good stat line. So we put him in there as four because you can even shift him. Playing two scar. Um, this card is actually really, really strong. Um, being able to have rush and to ready himself when he banishes a character. Uh, $17 of the deck also coming right there from him. 6-5 uh, stat line works out pretty good. And if you do decide to quest, he quests for two. Then Mickey Mouse, Brave Little Taylor. He quests for four, and that's really all we have to say. He's our big hitter off of the Mufasa. Lastly, we have Chernabog for our character lineup. His 9-9, nine, nine, quest for three. You have all kinds of characters that end up in your discard. So playing two of him is a big powerhouse threat. Our four non-character cards, we played two Bear Necessities and two Maui's Fishhook. Keep in mind, Maui Fishhook, giving your character evasive until the end of next turn, can be very, very nice for protecting things like your Brave Little Tailor or your Chernabog or your Stitch. Um, you play it and you have these guys say so you quest for four, you give him evasive till your next turn, and now your opponent can't even challenge to take him out unless they have evasive. So this was it, guys. Episode 1 of Budget Week. I might do this monthly. I might do it quarterly. I'm not entirely sure yet, but one thing is for sure. There's four more videos coming for the rest of the week. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below, guys. Thanks for watching.